Orthopedic Management of Polytrauma Patient. Management of Polytrauma Patient will have certain principles, and these principles are the pelvis is an emergency, compartment syndrome is an emergency, open fracture is urgent, hip and knee dislocations are emergencies, femur fracture could be a problem. Then assist the resuscitation. If they are under resuscitation, you're going to do provisional stabilization. If they are adequately resuscitated, you will do a definitive fixation. Imaging and multiple trauma. Usually, we get the C-spine, the chest, to see if there is an aortic problem or lung problem, and we get the pelvis. Nowadays, routinely, most of the centers are getting CT scans. The unstable pelvic fracture, the patient is unstable, and the pelvis is unstable. The pelvis is an open book type. Then we will apply a binder or a sheet around the pelvis immediately. If the patient in the operating room, you will do external flexor. If you're giving the patient four units of blood and they remain unstable and they have an obvious pelvic fracture, you probably need to do angiography and embolization. Usually, the superior gluteal artery is torn. Hemorrhage is the leading cause of death in pelvic fracture. Closed head injury can occur in lateral compression fracture. However, in open book ABC type 3, you have the highest rate of blood loss, blood transfusion, and mortality. Mortality correlates with shock at presentation. The compartment syndrome is another area that you need to deal with emergently. Pain more than the injury, you have a swelling of the extremity. Pain with passive stretch of the compartment. Parathesia in a specific area, it usually occurs later. The pulses, the pallor occurs later. Usually it is too late. You got to have high index of suspicion. Don't wait for the five Ps. The five Ps indicate a well-established compartment syndrome. You need to diagnose the compartment syndrome early because you need to do the fasciotomy before six hours. Otherwise, you may have dead muscles. Pressure measuring can be used to diagnose or to confirm the diagnosis of compartment syndrome when the situation is not clear. And if the pressure is 30 mm mercury or within 30 mm mercury of the diastolic pressure, then you will do a fasciotomy. The delta P, which is the perfusion pressure, is the one that currently is used frequently. The delta P is the diastolic pressure minus the compartment pressure. If it is within 30 mm mercury, then that is critical, then you need to do fasciotomy. The anterior compartment is the one that's usually involved in the leg. When performing fasciotomy in the lower leg, the classic two incision technique is commonly used. The lateral incision is made halfway between the tibia and the fibula, and you will release the anterior and the lateral compartments. Be careful not to injure the superficial perineal nerve. The medial leg incision is made 2 cm posterior to the tibia. Then you open the superficial posterior compartment. 
and the deep posterior compartment. We're going to talk about open fractures. Classification of open fracture. Grade 1, 1 cm or less. Grade 2, 1 to 10 cm. Grade 3, more than 10 cm. Grade 3 is divided into 3, A, B, and C. Grade 3, A, there is adequate tissue for closure or coverage. 3, B, extensive preosseal stripping requires soft tissue coverage, a local or distant flap. Grade 3, C, vascular injury requiring repair or amputation. Segmental fractures are considered grade 3, even if they have a small wound. The most important thing to remember with open fractures is to give immediate IV antibiotics. Give the antibiotics immediately, as soon as possible. Delay in giving the antibiotics will result in more infections. Increased infection rate occurs when antibiotic administration is delayed more than three hours. You will continue the antibiotics for 48 to 72 hours following the index procedure. You will do urgent and adequate debridement to prevent infection. The timing of the irrigation and debridement is debatable. There is no difference in the rate of infection identified between early and late debridement. The six-hour rule doesn't have a lot of support in the literature. You will do early soft tissue coverage within seven days because that decreases the infection rate. So what kind of antibiotics do you give? You will give first generation cephalosporin for grade 1 and grade 2. You will add aminoglucoside for grade 3. So you will give first generation and aminoglucoside for stage 3. You will add penicillin if there is gross contamination, if there is a farm injury, if there is bowel ischemia. And if there is water contamination, use fluoroquinolone. Or if there is a critical piece of bone that's missing and is found, you can sterilize it and you can put it back and fix it. It's probably better to give it a try rather than throw it away. You can use antibiotic solution or betadine to sterilize it. If there is a metaphyseal defect in the bone and a big gap, you may use cement with antibiotics. Also, the wound vac is very helpful in the treatment of open fractures. How about when the patient is pregnant? Trauma is the most common cause of maternal death in pregnancy. Problems between pregnancy and getting x-rays, especially in the first trimester because the fetus is at risk. But when the patient is more than 20 weeks, Position the mother in the left lateral decubitus position to avoid compression of the aorta and the inferior vena cava by the uterus, which will decrease the cardiac output by about 30%. If the spine of the patient is okay, then she should be in the left lateral decubitus position. Resuscitation should focus on the mother. The fetus can die from maternal shock or maternal death. Another problem with multiple trauma is the DVT. You need to know about the vertical triad. You need to get the patient out of bed, early mobilization, Mechanical compression devices, 
in surgery, in bed, in the hospital, which might prevent venous stasis and increase systemic endogenous fibrinolytic activity. You can also give low molecular weight heparin. You can use a filter in a high-risk polytrauma patient and in other specific indications. DVT is approximately 60% in pelvic fractures with a high PE incidence. Exam is more helpful to diagnose DVT. There will be a pain and a swelling and the Hohmann sign is not specific. What if you get acute PE? We will have increased ventilation pressure, acute onset of dyspnea, tachypnea, and tachycardia, and decreased oxygen saturation with increased PaCO2 and tidal CO2 gradient. If this happened in the operating room, do damage control orthopedics and get CT scan of the chest. Stabilize the patient and you probably will place a filter in some indications. How about traumatic amputations? You need to control the bleeding. It is the severity of the soft tissue injury that have the highest impact on the decision-making process, whatever you amputate or not. Absence of plantar fixation is also important, but it is not an absolute contraindication to reconstruction. The outcome, especially return to work, is not really different between amputation and the reconstruction of the extremity at two years follow-up. Now we talk about general trauma complications, fat embolism syndrome. It occurs in about 10% of multiple trauma patients. It occurs in up to 2% of isolated fractures. It usually occurs between 24 to 48 hours after the injury. The difference between fat embolism and pulmonary embolism is the interval between the injury and the symptoms. Fat embolism occurs earlier than pulmonary embolism. The mortality rate of fat embolism is about 20%. This inflammatory response to all embolized fat globules, it can be mechanical, like in the marrow, or metabolic. Early fracture fixation and destabilization decrease the incidence of fat embolism. How to diagnose it? You need to have one major criteria, hypoxemia, CNS depression and confusion, petechial rash, pulmonary edema. The last three are called the classic triad. The oxygen level will be below 60. Four minor criteria, tachycardia, pyrexia, retinal emboli, fat in the urine or in the sputum, thrombocytopenia, decreased hematocrit, dyspnea and anxiety, and tachypnea. Treatment is ventilatory support with high level of PEEP, in addition to prevention and have a high index of suspicion. Another complication is acute respiratory distress syndrome. ARDS, which is an acute lung injury, which leads to refractory hypoxemia, decreased lung compliance with poor gas exchange. Patient will have pulmonary edema with diffuse infiltrative changes on x-ray. It's caused by acute endothelial damage. It has a high mortality rate that can reach up to 50%. Patient will have dyspnea with resistant hypoxia. Rule out cardiac pulmonary edema or bilateral pneumonia. The treatment is PEEP, ventilation, and steroids.
and also prophylaxis with early stabilization of long bone fractures, especially the femur. Patient can die from sepsis or from multi-system organ failure.